Hey everyone, and welcome. Today, we're jumping headfirst into a real question from India's super challenging UPSC exam. But listen, this isn't just about acing a test. We're gonna break down something called the IS curve, which is a really core idea that shows how an entire economy kind of finds its balance. So let's get right into it. Okay, so here's our challenge for today. I know, it looks a little dense, a little intimidating, right? But don't worry, we're gonna unpack this piece by piece in simple, logical steps. And by the end of this, you'll know exactly how to put together a killer answer. So here's our game plan. We'll start with the big question, then get to the bottom of what the IS curve even is. After that, we'll figure out how to write the perfect answer, peek inside the mind of the person grading it, and then I'll show you what you should look at next. All right, first things first, before we can even begin to talk about its slope, we've got to get a handle on what the IS curve actually is. Let's build that foundation, shall we? You know, the name itself is actually a huge clue. IS literally stands for investment equals saving. And that right there is the golden rule for the goods market to be in equilibrium or, you know, perfectly balanced. So just think of this curve as a map of all the possible points where an economy's spending and its production are in sync based on interest rates and the country's income. Let's make this super simple. Let me paint you a picture. Imagine interest rates are way up. That makes it really expensive for a company to borrow money to build, say, a new factory, right? So what do they do? They invest less. And when businesses aren't investing, well, there's less production, fewer jobs are created, and the whole national income starts to drop. So high rates lead to low economic activity. Simple. Okay, so now let's flip that on its head. What if interest rates go down? Suddenly, borrowing money is cheap. That new factory project that seemed too pricey before? It's looking really profitable now. So businesses start borrowing and investing like crazy. All that new investment fires up production, and that means more income for everybody. Low rates, high economic activity. And that inverse relationship? Well, that's the whole secret behind the IS curve. So we've got the theory down. But the big question is, how do we turn that knowledge into an answer that gets top marks on an exam? Well, it's all about having a solid structure. Let's walk through the steps together. Think of this as a four-step recipe for a perfect score. First, you just define what it is, nice and clear. Second, you interpret what the slope means. That hits the first part of the question directly. Third, and this is key, you explain why it slopes that way, laying out the cause and effect. And finally, you just sprinkle in the right economic terms to show them you really know your stuff. Now, that third step is absolutely crucial. It's really where you separate yourself from the pack. It's not enough to just say, oh, there's an inverse relationship. An examiner wants to see that you get the mechanism, the how and the why behind it. So how do we do that? This is the exact chain reaction you need to explain. It's like a line of dominoes. A lower interest rate makes investment go up. More investment drives up aggregate demand for goods and services, and that higher demand leads to a higher national income. And hey, pro tip, if you really want to impress the greater, you can mention the multiplier effect. That's the idea that the first boost in investment actually creates an even bigger ripple effect of spending and income throughout the economy. Okay, now for my favorite part. Let's pull back the curtain and get inside the head of the person who's actually grading your paper. Because once you understand what they're looking for, it's so much easier to give it to them. So check this out. An average answer just says, yeah, they're related. A good answer actually explains the connection. But to get that excellent score, you have to go one step further. You need to talk about the slope as being about sensitivity, how much income reacts to a change in interest rates. And of course, you drop that little mention of the multiplier effect. That detail, that is what separates a good answer from a truly great one. Getting the IS curve is a massive step, seriously. But in the world of macroeconomics, it's really only half of the story. It's part of a very famous duo called the ISLM model. So let's quickly look at what comes next on your journey. So your next move should be to figure out what makes the entire IS curve shift. We're talking about big things like government spending or tax changes. You'll also want to dive way deeper into that multiplier effect we mentioned. And of course, you have to meet the IS curve's partner, the LM curve, because when you put those two together, you basically unlock the whole toolkit for analyzing government economic policies. It's powerful stuff. So there you have it. We took a pretty complex exam question and broke it down into a clear, logical framework. You now know that the IS curve's downward slope is all about that push and pull between interest rates and investment. You have the concept, you have the structure, and you have the strategy. 
The only question left is what are you going to master next? Thanks so much for joining me.